Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the Hollywood apocalypse. Gosh. And you know whose fault it all is? You know whose fault it's gonna be, right? Blame Trump. Yeah, blame blame the government. Blame, that, they're not saying that, but that's what's basically it's the being government's said. Government's fault. Blame the government. Uh, blame the government for theaters uh, crumbling under the the weight of the the shutdown, which I do feel. I'm gonna be honest, I do feel very badly for all the employees and thousands, tens right. of thousands of theater employees out of business. Um, we're gonna talk about that. Scott Mendelson blaming wait, wait, politics. Wait, 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 wait. Scott Mendelson argues the COVID-19 pandemic and Americans who failed to contain it are to blame. What about all the other countries whose uh, it, you know cinema shut down too because they had issues as well? He did not come out and say it was Trump's fault. But, but if you read between the lines. But beyond that, it's a global epidemic. How is it just America's fault? Because the, 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 the box office overseas, they are really, really pissed off because the American box office is doing what they're doing. It's causing the harm to theirs. So how again, and, and you know, they had shutdowns all over the world. How is it all America's fault? Because we're just that important. Hollywood is just that important. And actually I'm seeing a lot of these critics flip out like movie Bob, what is his name? Movie Bob. He was, flip, he was flipping out, blaming, blaming Trump for his, his lack of career now because he's a movie reviewer and there are no movies to review. There's a lot of people who had jobs that now are in in trouble because their jobs can't be going on right now or they're they're you know like look at the theme park people you know 28 000. they're out of jobs you know 2020 000. sucks a lot of people are out of jobs a lot of people you know were laid off for months and are financially screwed it's not just you but when you're angry you're gonna lash out right so we're gonna talk about the the rage of the critics we're gonna talk about patty jenkins um, thinking, she thinks that shutting the theaters down, this is it. This is game over. It's, it's, uh, well, theaters are I over. I don't 100% disagree. Um, We've been wondering that ourselves. You know, uh, cause can they come back from this? Because, you know, we said before that, uh, you, you know, Regal, they shut down mm -hmm. for the God knows how long, maybe forever, who knows. But, but there's nothing to run except for reruns, why bother? People aren't going. Why would you pay $10 to go see a movie? You know, it depends on the movie, but you can only rerun so many good But movies. even beyond that, major markets still aren't open yet. There's major markets in the United States in certain areas um, who Hollywood kisses their ass and they're not open. But no, no, it's everybody, it's other people's fault. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're at almost 150,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, this coming from Bounding in the Comics. Forbes film critic Scott Mendelson argues COVID-19 pandemic and Americans who failed to contain it are to blame if movie theaters don't survive. Uh, he said, if movie theaters don't survive, it will be due to the pandemic and those, especially in America, that failed to contain it, period. It wasn't streaming, it wasn't the studios, it wasn't the theaters failing to adapt. It was a plague that led to a year with no new blickbusters. But you know what? It's a blickbuster. I have no idea. <laughs> you know what though? It's a pandemic. It's not something that can be controlled as easily as they're like, oh, we just snap your fingers. And then, and to control it the way they wanted it controlled would have required a lot, a lot more people losing their jobs. It would have required a lot more shutdowns. It would have required uh, things being shut down the way that they're bitching about now. You know what I'm saying? So there's no way you could win this. It's a fucking pandemic. Uh, here's the thing, and and we talked about this with you know comics too. I, I do think streaming uh, played some role in. I do because what happened? Well, one, I mean, more people are watching you know Netflix and stuff now than than ever before. But uh, you know, obviously, because they're stuck in their houses, but. It became very easy, but just even shutting down for a month or two, America started to realize how much easier it is to just watch a movie at home. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have, you know, our TV's what, 55 inches? People got yes, freaking- that's a that's a you thing. The bigger he can make it, the better, happier he is. Hey, that's what you said. Anyway. <laughs> um, just, I, I need a big giant TV. Actually, it could I be bigger. See. It just won't fit on the, the, the my my grandmother's credenza if we go much larger. I, I can't see. That's a big problem. So I need a big TV so I can That's see. That's right. That's what it is. From across the yard. So people look in the well, window. I can't see. So I need a big. No, I'm sorry. I'm 
So anyway, um, I do know some people that have like 96 inch TVs. I know, I know. It's like I'm a like, wall. It's the entire wall is a television. Well, if he thought if, if if I would have let him, that's what he would do. I probably would have. Anyway, but the point is, what sort of theaters, you know, people have their home theaters and everything else. It really isn't as necessary. Um, I think too that it, it, you know, it's not always about streaming. It's about the studios. It is. Uh, because the studios uh, weren't prepared yeah. for something bad to happen. They just thought they would infinitely be able to do what they want. I think there's too much being put out. Um, I think that's a problem. I think people would rather watch YouTube yeah. than watch these TV shows and things, which is a, which to them is a problem. To me, is like, hell yeah. Well, how can they? Yeah, because it's like we can't let the riffraff make their own content. We can't let the riffraff, you know, have their own opinions, not let us tell them what's what because we're Hollywood. Oh, my God. So, uh, Mendelssohn goes on. Uh, it was an unplanned and unexpected event yes, that led to... Yes, unplanned and unexpected. Yep. No new products being released for a business that relies entirely on those products. Actually, the, Like the theme parks? Yeah, right. The products exist. The studios are deliberately holding back on releasing their movies. Right, there's a difference. Just, yeah, partially due to governmental demands that their businesses be closed sans any financial assistance. Um, well, take it up with, take it up with California. Well, not just yet, yeah, but not just that. We're talking about some of these, some of the things being done with the filming and stuff were overseas and they had to follow overseas guidelines yeah. that had nothing to do with America. There's a shit ton of movies just waiting, waiting to be released. Yeah, studios won't do it. They're not doing it because they- They're afraid to lose money. Yeah, they're holding out, holding out, hoping that the theaters open next year and they can dump all of this year's movies in the theaters next year. Um, it, I, well, I would blame the studios, to be honest with you. If you're going to blame somebody, blame on the studios because they will not put the, the stuff out. They can put it on to VOD. They don't want to. They can release it in the theaters and VOD, and people can make a choice. They won't do that because they won't be able to, to, to get the money that they're going to get. Well, that's just it. Because, look, if the studios, and, and this is this whole you know conversation everybody's having right now, right? If the studios are really that concerned about the movie theaters, uh, yeah, they could they could you know dump the new movies. I mean, hell, if there were new movies ever, and there are enough movies being banked right now mm -hmm. that we could have new movies every week, and people actually would go to the theater. But Regal specifically shut down because they're like, there's nothing new, so why bother? But it's but it's not Hollywood's fault. It's the government because I don't know because the pandemic happened. Because you know, don't you know that the government has the the you know forces of God to stop anything from ever getting through ever. Um, if we all, you know, if, you know, if everybody wore masks, it would never, no one would ever get sick ever. But you know, I'm not gonna get into that, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a stupidity. Why didn't we just put a bubble around the country and we could have stopped it all? We could have just put a giant flipping mask across the United States and that should have solved the issue. I mean, that's stupid argument. That's as stupid as this argument. I don't know why, but I'm thinking the globe from Pee Wee's Playhouse with a mask. There you go. On his face. I'm just like, this is a dumb argument because it is the studios. The studios could help the, the movie theaters. They won't. No, they because they know at the end of the day that the studios, I mean, they're they're trying to watch their bottom line. They know at the end of the day that they're watching. They're like, well, if the theaters all go tits up, uh, we can still dump this stuff on the VOD. And we're probably, even if we don't make as much revenue, generate as much revenue, we're still going to have a bigger profit because we don't have to share with a student. Exactly. Know. And the thing is, the thing is they had, well, he said, theatrical moving going on earned 42.5 billion in revenue. And most of that going to the studios, but they're shit ass poor now and they can't afford to hold out or no. do something. They have the money. They've had the money. They've used the money to buy their own way in a lot of, a lot of places, mm -hmm. pay off whoever they had to pay off, et cetera, et cetera. They have the money, but no, the government shouldn't help the people that are lower on a totem pole who need help. They should bail their asses out so they don't have to spend their own money. That's right. They should get a bailout because Hollywood's essential. Remember those all the celebrities signing that? Hollywood's essential. Well, you know, there, there's markets that, that things can be released to. Studios can be releasing films overseas to markets that are open, but they won't because they know damn well that as soon as they do, the Bay Ray's gonna sail the high seas and watch it online here because they know it's gonna everything's gonna be leaked. To, you know, before it yeah. hits the U.S., so they don't want to do that. And in the meantime, they're they're all upset because other countries are making their own damn films, and everybody's going to see those. They don't need the American box office anymore because they're finding that out. And now they're like, "Oh my God, we're losing our global box office too." But it's all the American people in power who we all knew what they're talking about is fault. 
So here we go. This is where we get into what's actually being said. It will be because unforeseen circumstances which were not successfully fixed due to arguable willful U.S. governmental negligence. Which, which one are you talking about? You talking about the governor's refusal to let states open? Or are you talking about Trump? Oh, we know who he's probably talking about. I mean, which one about. is it? Prevented theaters from doing the singular thing for over under a year that theaters do to make money. Everything else is true. Theaters have been, theaters have been allowed to be open for a while now. We got the, the drive Theaters, things. except for certain certain markets that are like New York and California and a couple other states, most theaters are allowed to be open and have been allowed to be open for months. So, uh, yeah, this is, I'm not really sure what Mendelssohn's saying. It, I, I feel it that way a lot of times when he's talking. It's unclear whether Mendelssohn's issue is specifically with the government's response to the pandemic or their failure to provide additional ongoing economic assistance to businesses impacted by pandemic-related shutdowns, but... Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about either, Bounty into Comics. Uh, it's not just you. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about Patty Jenkins, who has seen Wonder Woman, which was your... Top I movie wanted to see Wonder Woman so bad. Wonder Woman 1984 has been pushed back so many times. I love Wonder Woman so much. Um, and Patty Jenkins is coming out and talking about it uh, too. She said, if we shut this down, this will not be a reversible process. We could lose movie theater going forever. It is possible. 100% possible. Uh, though This is coming from uh, IndieWire. Though nearly three quarters of U.S. theaters are open and tenant resuscitated the global box office, with health, okay, here's the thing. And again, I, I do blame the studios. Tenet resuscitated the global box office with healthy returns. They it made $300 million. If they released Ghostbusters and Wonder Woman mm -hmm. and Black Widow and all of these movies that people have been looking forward to for a long time, it's possible that even though they're not gonna break the billion dollar mark that they, they would have last year, they're still gonna make enough to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, but no one um, wants to take the hit. They don't want to take right. a hit to their bottom line. Everybody needs to give them money to stay in business. And, you know, and honestly, for all they're yelling about theaters, if they really cared about theaters, they'd be doing something to stop it and help. They're not. They don't. Yeah, they're pushing Doom back. Doom was supposed to come out this year. No Time to Die, James Bond, and that was what did it for Regal. They were like, we're not even getting a James Bond movie, so we're we're out. They're we're throwing the, stu the theaters under the bus. The, the yeah, studios are. are throwing theaters under the bus and blaming everybody else for it. So I got wonder cynic in me is there is there a tax incentive for this like we're just gonna write this whole oh, year all off. lost yeah big hollywood accounting we're just this whole year is just completely a bust for us we're not gonna make any revenue we're just gonna take all and then we're gonna go panhandle to the government mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna blame the government uh, -huh. uh for all this and then we're gonna go panhandle for some money even well, though we could have released movies you know those programs for kids that they had going on and stuff well you should just shut those down and give us money so we can save the movie theater industry because holly it's hollywood Kids don't need to eat. They how, need movies. How are people going to think for them? How are they going to make decisions about important matters if we're not posing naked telling them how? Oh, my God. The world will end. Like Gwyneth Paltrow's kids with gluten sensitivity or something. Like, my kids need special food. It doesn't matter if those poor kids don't eat, but I got it. My kids, it's expensive to feed my children. Wait, she said this? No. I'm I was like, why would you say that? She didn't say that. She said She's a little weird. Shit she like does that. say stupid stuff. But that, um, that, I was like, that was even far for her. I was like, I don't know. Well, she, no, I'm just saying, because a lot of these celebrities are like, we need a special diet. I can't live like the riffraff. And she has said that before. Gwyneth Paltrow has said, to the effect of like, I can't live like a normal person on a normal salary. And people are like, what the hell? Yeah. It's like, she's not normal. And then she releases a candle that smells like her vajayjay. So we know she's not normal. I wonder who was making sure the quality control was accurate. <laughs> that is a job. That is a dirty job. What do you do for a living? I, I smell Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina to make sure it smells <laughs> like a candle. <laughs> to make sure it's authentic. Next week, I'm smelling her ass. <laughs> so I'm just like... It could be the kind of thing that happened to the music industry where you could crumble the entire industry by making it something that can't be profitable, said Jenkins. Uh, she also added, I don't think any of us want to live in a world where the only option is to take your kids to watch a movie in your own living room and not have a place to go for a date. Well, there's actually lots of places to go for a date. And there's also drive-ins, which are doing very well. Yeah. Uh, another movie heading straight to VOD is Soul, uh, pushed off from November Disney Plus, because they got to do something, because Disney Plus is kind of dead in the water right now, too. They got, uh, what, WandaVision coming out and another season of Mandalorian, but it's really kind of like... And I think they knew Soul wasn't going to be like a massive, massive... Uh, yeah, I, that wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I figured they'd sacrifice that one. Yeah, they sacrificed Soul. But Jenkins and Warner Brothers continue to insist that VOD play is not being considered for Wonder Woman. Just wait and see how desperate Warner Brothers if is. If the theaters go out, the studios have to put it on VOD. 
Yeah, I mean, it's better to make some money than so no money. So this is what I'm trying to understand, okay? The theaters and the studios, the studios keep arguing that we have to save the studios, have to save Hollywood, to save the box office because it's so important. But the studios refuse to release the movies to the box office. Instead, they're holding them hostage till next year and hope that the, the hope the theaters are still around by the government billing them out instead of Hollywood billing their own theaters out, their own distribution methods out. And then uh, at the end of the day, if the theaters go out, they'll just release them to the VOD anyway. Yes. So the only ones who fail and lose are the, are the theaters that Hollywood could save right now if they wanted to. If they really wanted to, yeah, they could just say, hey, we got like 20 movies in the can. We could just start pumping them out. And if the studios were so desperate for money, like they keep claiming on how they need a bailout, wouldn't it just make more sense to release the movies to to video, release them to the theater and video on demand at the same time so people can choose what they want to do? A lot of people will go to the theater just because they miss the experience, just because they want to save theaters. A lot of people who don't feel safe will watch it on video on demand. Everybody's happy. A theater makes money. Hollywood makes money. The government isn't expected to bail out Hollywood's rich ass when they already have money anyway. But no, no, that would make too much damn sense. So we're just going to blame it on on Americans in office, which you know what that means. <laughs> I mean, well, how about you? Well, if you're going to blame it on somebody, blame it on the governors that are keeping the, the state shut, the bigger state shut down and people can't go to the theaters. A good majority of movie theaters are. Yeah, right. And blame blame a certain governor in a certain state where a lot of these movies are filmed and produced. Right. Uh, just saying, um, you know, I think what's going on just in general, because I'm seeing a lot of celebrities lose their shit. I think the reality is sinking in that Hollywood is not going to be the same on the other side of this. Right. Not that I'm not going to be me with my, you know, red carpet, whatever. And everybody's, you know, waiting for my every word. Remember when Twitter blocked everybody with blue checks and everybody was thrilled to death because they didn't have to listen to them talk, mm -hmm. brag about themselves for like a whole day. Yeah, it's Hollywood is fundamentally going to change. We're, it's never going to go back to what it was before. I hope to God we don't lose theaters. I don't think we will, but I think they will become less central to the movie going experience. I think it'll be a nice experience to get out and go to a theater. But I think that uh, a lot of people, since we basically all, a lot of us have home theaters now, you don't have to deal with the sticky mm -hmm. floors, hopefully. Uh, you don't have to deal with screaming kids, hopefully. Um, but I think that that's going to change and people are going to go do some other stuff instead of taking an entire like, you know, five or six hours to go see a two hour movie. By the time you get ready and you drive to the theater and you get the tickets and you get the venue to sit down, you wait and you go through the previews and you drive back home. Huge, huge time sink. People I'm seeing people go outside and have bonfires and talk. You know what people are doing? I see them doing it. They're getting those projector screens, yeah. running movies on the screens around a fire and having fun. We need to have a clownfish theater, drive-in theater. We'll go get one of those big inflatable screens. And who are you going to invite? I don't no, know. No, don't no, don't announce that. Oh, I'm, hell I, no. <laughs> that, would be, that would be very bad. That would be very, very bad. There would be a lot of people, and a lot of them probably wouldn't like us. So, <laughs> it depends on the movies that we run. So I don't know, guys. I think um, you know Hollywood's going to change. People are freaking out. That's basically what's going on. Uh, and everybody's trying to blame everybody else. But at the end of the day, the, the studios very easily could release these movies. The studios could solve their own problems. They just don't want to. They want to blame everybody else. Right now, because it's an election coming up, yeah. it's easier to start screaming and blaming everybody else so that they can try to influence an election because they think people still care about what they say. Um, and they don't want to have to take responsibility for it. And it's a pandemic. Pandemic is not anyone's fault. I mean, unless someone, you know, does something deliberately to cause it. Um, well, whoever... <laughs> Ate to kiss the whatever the, the pain. Well, they didn't do it deliberately. I'm saying unless they prove that someone deliberately did it. It's nobody's fault. It, this stuff happens. It happens throughout t all time. It has happened over and over and over again. It'll probably happen again. If anything, we're guilty of being too arrogant to think it couldn't happen again. Um, that's true. That's th true. I mean, that's, that's our downfall. And that's on everyone. But the Hollywood could save themselves. Hollywood could save theaters. Hollywood could, you know, there's so much they could do right now. They just don't want to. For whatever reason, tax write-offs, like you said, or just because it's an election year and they want to try to leverage this or because um, they think they're not going to make as much money that way, uh, which is likely, you know, all of the above. They don't want to fix the problem. And they could be part of the solution, but they'd rather whine about it on to the media. That is true. Um, all right, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Yep, because I'm hungry. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye.